Hello people, uh, this is Edward King again. Um, I've got the camera pointed at my game. Um, in another one of my videos I explain what I do in my game. But that's uh, <clears throat> not the topic uh, this evening. Uh, I just thought I'd have the uh, camera pointed at my ecology game that I like to play. And I hope the sound's okay because I've got the camera pointed away and there's a microphone in the camera. So, um, but I've adjusted my titanium sound blaster settings, so I hope that uh, this turns out okay and that you can hear everything that I'm saying clearly. All right, so we'll just minimize this for now, and uh, we'll get on to talking uh, about the topic, tonight's topic. I debated whether or not I should actually verbally address this. I'm addressing it uh, right now in text with a certain young man who uh, asked me some questions and I feel that, you know, it's uh, incumbent upon me being uh, somewhat of an elder uh, to answer this uh, young man fairly. I wouldn't call him a lad. I think he's past lad. He's into, you know, full-fledged manhood now. So, I, I gave him my take on the subject, and uh, I'm sure you're all just waiting with bated breath to hear what the subject is. Uh, just give me a moment here. I need to collect my thoughts because this is a very serious subject. And with all gravity, it has to be addressed uh, in solemnity and uh, um, sobriety. Uh, it's a very serious subject. He asked me about love. Now love, okay? I mean, all oh, love. Well. Well, I don't know if many have really considered this as I sit in my orchard with my Canadian maple flag on here. Um, actually, that's just my avatar. That's uh, an image. Not a graven image, I might add. There's a difference. It's not a graven image, but it is an image. And our bodies are images. Um, this young man that I spoke with, uh, he's someone who's, you know, being through uh, school hard knocks and uh, here and there, uh, he's forthright, you know, he's, he's dedicated and, and I admire that quality in young men. Um, but um, he's had some challenges with love, and I know who, who hasn't, right? Who hasn't? But I think that my take on it, which is uh, about 30 years now, is pretty close to the reality of love. The first rule concerning love that I think people need to learn to abide by is that love is not just... Um, an emotion. I know that you know emotions have a lot to do with love, and I'm well aware of uh, this fact. But love itself is not an emotion. Now bear with me here, okay? An emotion is actually defined as a physiological process. Uh, when when our heart speeds up, when certain chemicals are being released into our bloodstream, adrenaline, whatnot. Um, what we're experiencing physically throughout our bodies is an emotion, all right? Now that's the flesh, okay? That's the flesh. And as these chemicals are being dumped into our bloodstream, they're sending signals back to our brain, and our brain is either feeding it or it's stepping down on it. But it is nonetheless a physiological process. That, that is what the emotion is. Emotion. Okay. And so there's a, a, an emoting that takes place as a result of these 
physiological processes. Now, that's not love. All right? That's the flesh. Okay? That's not love. Love, on the other hand, uh, can uh, generate a myriad of emotions in us. Uh, how many of you have been angry, but you're still in love? Okay? Uh, or sad, but you're still in love? Don't tell a man who's got the blues for a woman that he's not in love, but he's sad. Okay? Uh, what about uh, when you're ecstatic, but you're in love? Well, that's not so hard to believe, is it? Um, you know, uh, the people that you love the most can probably make you the angriest the most, you know, or make you. Uh, I'll, I'll have to save that for another topic, that make you. But, <clears throat> but uh, you respond to them with all sorts of emotions. Those emotions are not love. Eric. I have to check to see how much time I have here. And uh, remember that these videos are not made for watching. Um, you know, my guy is sitting there uh, taking a break at his uh, orchard in my ecology game. Because <clears throat> the operator wants to talk to you about love. All right, there goes a bird. Um, For those of you who are ready to receive it, and those of you who will receive it, love is spirit, right? Love is power, okay? And therefore, if I'm going to say that love is spirit, I also have to be prepared to say that love is a spirit. And um, as processors, we are you know, organic processors, for lack of a better term. But but we do process things. We process thoughts. We process feelings. And we process, you know, um, actions. Thoughts, feelings, actions. Hold on to that, by the way. Thoughts, feelings, actions. Because those are the three major categories that we really have to keep in check concerning ourselves, our bodies, our avatars, if you will. Because if you think you are your body and that's all there is to you, uh, you can just go and move on. You're, you're not ready to learn. You know, you don't realize that there's actually somebody sitting at the driver's seat and that's why, you know, there's such a thing as getting knocked out of your driver's seat and even though your brain is still functioning, no, nobody's home, okay? No, you are the driver. Your body is the vehicle. Your brain is where you sit. It's your control panel. All right? But you yourself are not your flesh. If you believe you are your flesh, you're lost. You haven't got it figured out yet. Go back to kindergarten and learn that you have a soul. Okay, but I don't want to digress. I just want to focus on the fact that we do process thoughts, feelings, and actions with our bodies, yes. And um, love is a spirit, not an emotion. And it can incite feelings of anger. It can incite feelings of, of uh, ecstasy and pleasure and joy. Uh, unspeakable joy all right love can can generate all these different things in us but love itself is not an emotion we can feel the presence of love oh yeah but we ought not to be so short-sighted as to confuse the presence of love with emotions that's why people have such a hard time describing love, because they think love is an emotion. Oh, it feels good. Well, what do you mean it feels good? Well, it just feels good. Well, love is a good thing. <clears throat> I, I don't deny that. Unfortunately, we can invest our love in our love. 
we can invest it in the wrong things. We we can love the wrong things, right? But I'll get into that probably some other time. Uh, but love itself, in and of itself, is a spirit. And trust me, love can take care of itself. People take care of each other. And, yes, uh, compassion is one expression of love. I, 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 you know, love for your fellow man. Uh, or, as it is said in the Greek, achapeos. From whence we get that word, agape. Achapeos. But what, what I'm getting at here with respect to love, uh, if I were to describe it or compare it to anything so that it would make a better illustration, I would say that love is much like light. All right? And uh, many analogies uh, concerning uh, love uh, have been made with respect to light. A prism can refract light and when light passes through a prism it breaks down into spectra uh, different you know wavelengths of light uh, red, green, uh, violet, uh, yellow and of course your, your infrared and your uh, indigo and your ultraviolet Okay, love is much like that. When when love passes through us, okay, we're like the prism. We don't love our mother like we love our dad. We don't love our sons and daughters. We don't even love our sons the same way we love our daughters. There's a different color, if you will, to the love, and um, a different intensity, a different frequency. And love is much like light in that respect, that there are so many different wavelengths. I mean, come on, you look at the, the, the spectrum of light that emerges from a prism. It isn't just green light. It's thousands of different sorts of green. And, you know, thousands of different sorts of yellow. I think yellow is a very wide spectrum, like millions, you know, um, but narrows down with infrared and ultraviolet, right? Um, and and the, the, the invisible frequencies in the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. But for the purpose of this analogy, what I'm trying to say is that love is that diverse, yet it's all love, you know, but it, it does have different areas. It does have um, you know, different spectra, if you will. And, uh, you know, I mean, I could assign, say, red love to the kind of love a man has for a woman. You know, um, you know, uh, that passionate, deep red love and, you know, tapering off into lighter and not so deep areas and then blending to orange where, you know, it's just like a, a, a friendly male female affection but not really you know turning so much toward the passionate end and then you know right into the yellow friendly zone right or strictly yellow friendly zone yes mature men can be friends with women but it takes a great level of maturity and um, I've been there and I can do that but it takes a great level of maturity you know um, if you're not careful, you'll get burned. You know, just that all that sunshine uh, could lead to trouble. But uh, I'll just call this part one because there's so much to this analogy. It's a beautiful analogy. If you compare love to light, you can learn a lot about love and understand love and how some people just seem to shine. You know, and um, just bear in mind that love is a spirit and uh, it's very easy to love the wrong things what we do with love is you know another subject that should be saved for a total different presentation
but I'm just summing something up for you. So I hope you enjoyed this audio presentation and uh, didn't just waste your time looking at this very boring video. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. Signing off for now. Good night.